So we're here today with the K9 unit to show off some equipment and life preservation uh, gear that the Phoenix Police Foundation was able to acquire via a grant that we applied for and won last year. So the value of this equipment and gear is really to keep our canines and our handlers safe. And we're already seeing the benefits of this equipment do that. And the Phoenix Police Foundation is very proud to be able to support the Phoenix Police Department K9 unit. One of the pieces of equipment is a floor thermal imaging monocular, which the canine officers can use during open area searches to see people that might be trying to hide from them as it shows a heat signature. So it enables us to see like inside bushes or really dense trees or vegetation to see if there's a person hiding inside that. So we can approach that person or whoever's hiding uh, safely to us and also say safely to them. So another piece of equipment is an underdoor camera, which allows a handler to put the camera underneath a door. It looks forward and up and allows the handler to see if anybody is in that room before they open the door and potentially send in one of our canines. We also have a recon robot, which is a small robot that can be thrown into a facility, allowing for a preliminary search before they send in a dog or a handler. We had a canine, Dennis, uh, who was shot in the line of duty and thank God he survived. Um, but the night shift canines were looking for a homicide suspect inside an apartment. They didn't really know what they had. There was kind of some conflicting information. Um, Dennis was sent in as safely as possible at the time. Turns out the suspect was hiding deep inside the apartment, kind of around the corner. So the dog went in, the dog saw the suspect, suspect saw the dog and opened fire on the dog and struck Dennis in kind of the face and neck area. But um, like I said, thank God the dog survived. But had we had the recon at that time, we could have thrown the recon into that apartment, driven it around, located that guy standing behind a corner and addressed the whole situation differently. We also have a piece of equipment used for training, which is a scent wall, which the handlers use to train their dogs on not only narcotic scents, but cadaver scents for when they're out in the field doing drug searches or looking for somebody that might be missing in a mountain preserve or something of that nature. It keeps the dogs trained up. The, the bite suits are a great tool. Like we call them like big puppy marshmallow man suits just because that's kind of what everybody recognizes those as. As somebody who uh, has just tried to put three dogs up and get three dogs up and trained in the last year or so, uh, myself and the gentleman on my squad were, were in a bite suit uh, almost every day, if not every day, multiple times a day. Um, they get very worn, as you could probably imagine, from the dogs just biting them constantly, all the pressure on the sleeves and up into the chest and stuff. So they develop holes after a while. And once you wear them for a time being, you start to notice that the teeth start poking through the suit, uh, which makes them a lot less fun to wear. They're already pretty unfun to wear because they're kind of hot and sweaty. It's just such an integral tool for us to be able to train the dogs to, to do their job. So the real goal of purchasing this equipment is to keep our canines, our handlers, and the general public as safe as they can be while they're out in the community protecting the public. Very grateful for this grant and we're happy to be able to assist the canine unit at the Phoenix Police Department.